what is going on, guys? Anthony here. Welcome back to another Black Clover mobile video. So today we are working on the SSR tier list. Um, if you guys want to check back on the SR and rare tier list, that is a video from two days ago, I believe. Um, it is it is pretty lengthy. I did not intend for it to be so long, but um, you know, time just goes on. I keep talking and stuff. So you guys want to check out that video? Link description. Also, yesterday, last night, we got news regarding the global banners very very exciting it, it came out of nowhere so if you guys want to check out that video as well link in the description is also the one prior to this one that you're watching so if you guys want to go check those videos out please please do but like i said today we are going to be talking about ssrs now this one is probably going to be very very weird because it has been confirmed that some of the broken units from the ssr list they have been confirmed to change i i, I can confirm 100 that they have changed their kits and stuff so when they do come out day one, they may not be as broken as they were in the beta. So, but like I said, this is this list is, you know, pre-launch, post-beta, and stuff like that. So please take it all with a grain of salt, um, because I I know that like day one people are gonna ask me, oh, you know, this unit doesn't do this anymore and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and start off. So we have Asta here, Asta seasonal Asta, right? This unit, um, if I remember correctly, he was actually pretty pretty good. He was a, a unit that was capable of doing a good amount of damage. So, when it comes to his passive, he has applies 5% attack increase every turn, stacks up to 10 times. Now, keep in mind with this game, there's going to be physical attack, which is just normal attack, and then magic attack. You guys will see here. Um, oh, I don't know why, but magic attack, yeah. So, these are the stats here. Um, if you guys want like, a more in depth video on stats, I will be doing that in a separate one. So, yeah, just I have, I have a ton of videos to make. But, level 1 skill applies weapon enhancement level 1 in that attacks the enemy. Uh, target if they have an active buff removes a barrier from an enemy target so really really good so if you do go up against an enemy that does have like a kind of defensive barrier simple take this Asta into it you can kind of remove it quite easily and then you're still able to do capable damage and the fact that this passive is every single turn so you're not nullifying it at all um, and it can stack up to five times or ten times I'm sorry so you are going to be getting a 50% attack increase if you do wait out the turns and you know wait all 10 turns all right when it comes to the second skill 80 percent chance to apply a dfs production level 2 to a single target for two turns not bad um attack percentage wise not the highest but um that percentage of 80 percent is pretty pretty high so if you want to get off some crazy nukes this unit is pretty pretty capable i believe um i think it was aoe if i remember i don't know why it's a single target maybe i'm tripping maybe it was single target but when it comes to the ultimate, it removes barrier and invulnerability from enemy target, applies DP level 3, and then it attacks the enemy target if their stamina is above 50%. So you can kind of do some crazy stuff with Asta, but the condition is that the enemy target has to have more than 50% stamina. So just bear that in mind. But for sure, you're removing the barrier and invulnerability guarantee. So that's pretty nice. And then the combined attack deals crit damage uh, with skills if the enemy target has an active defense reduction debuff and then applies crit damage increase level one and then he attacks the enemy target upon landing a successful crit with the skill so i'm not the biggest fan of the combined attack to be honest with you because you do have to land a crit but if you do build up the crit percentage um then you know you can do some crazy stuff but overall not too bad so for now i'm gonna for now for now for now i'm gonna put him in a tier um because i, I do know that you know based off the ssr list there are some pretty damn broken ssrs <laughs> Uh, Charlotte, Charlotte, Charlotte. So this unit was the unit that we got for the step up banner. Um, if you guys didn't know, she was the only unit that we got for step up. And um, yeah, it was pretty cool. The banner wise, it was very, very nice. Um, pretty cheap too, if I remember correctly. So we got discounted stats. We got, you know, step up rewards and all that. So not too shabby. All right. Passive applies poison to enemy target for two turns upon letting a crit. Um, it's going to run 25% chance to apply incapacitate level 1 to an enemy target for 2 turns upon every attack. Um, can be good. I'm not the biggest fan of this percentage. I feel like maybe a little bit higher would have been better. But, um, you know, it is what it is. So, when it comes to the second skill, 20% chance to gain an extra turn applies 10% stamina increase for every enemy target alive if you did not gain an extra turn. Okay, see, this is pretty good. The only thing is that her kit is kind of all over the place. You know, she has poison, she has, you know, incapacitate, she has stamina increase, extra turns and stuff like that. It's kind of like all over the place. It's not, you know, centered around like as like poison and stuff like that. I really like it when a unit's kit is kind of revolved around your passive 
and it makes sense, right? Um, so this at least so it's kind of like a win-win. If you do not gain the extra turn here, you get so let's just say you're going up against a, a team that still has four enemies left, right? If you don't get the extra turn off, then you're getting an extra 40% stamina increase if you do not gain the extra turn. So uh, that's what I do like about it. Um, so you're always guaranteed to pull off something if you do not get that extra turn. So I, I like it. I like it. I like it. Ultimate, 40% chance to apply total silence to an enemy target for two turns. 60% chance to apply defense reduction level three to enemy target for two turns. Um, for the ultimate, I feel like this should have been higher. Even though it's a defense reduction level three, I feel like this should have been maybe like 80% um, for the ultimate. And then 40% chance to apply total silence. I still don't know what this does yet, but um, yeah, I can't say. So if, if I knew what total silence did, then yeah, I could probably place it at A. Uh, but for combined attack, 80% chance to remove all buffs from enemy target applies for attack reduction level one to enemy target for turns if they have incapacitated debuff. Um, let's see. Okay, so the only way you're gonna be able to pull off is incapacitate is off to skill one and you have like a, such a low chance to pull that off so with that being said i'm gonna place her at b tier i feel like she isn't anything higher than that maybe even c to be honest okay i'm gonna place her at c tier for now i'm gonna place her at c tier for now just because i feel like her kit is not the best at all uh next up we got fugalion all right so fugalion passive applies burn uh for two turns upon landing a crit very very similar to a lot of units 70% chance to apply defense reduction to level 1 to enemy target for 2 turns. I like it. Applies defense reduction to level 1 to enemy target for 2 turns if they have an active burn debuff. I like it already. See, this is a very, very good skill 1 in comparison to Charlotte. Um, and then skill 2. 40% chance to apply burn to enemy target for 3 turns. 20% chance to stun an enemy for 1 turn if they have less than 50% stamina. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of that. And then 50% chance to apply speed reduction to level 2 to enemy target for 3 turns if they have less than 50% stamina. Okay, so I, I kind of see what they're going for here, but... Um... Okay, see, the thing is that a lot, a lot of these units have this thing where, you know, apply poison, apply burn, apply some kind of debuff if you are able to land a crit. Now, the crit percentage for a lot of these units are pretty low. Keep in mind, you do get to take gears and stuff like that, so I, I, I do understand why. But I feel like they, if a unit does have this kind of passive where they have to land a crit, make it to where they get some kind of crit buff in here, dude. But, you know, Charlotte doesn't have it, Fugalian doesn't have it, so I guess you're relying on a support type unit to go ahead and, and you know, uh, crit increase, which I know there are plenty of them, but so I would have liked it. Maybe this. I feel like take out this right here. 20% chance to stun an enemy for one turn if they're less than 50% stamina. I feel like take this out and put in some kind of crit rate up. I feel like that would have been better, especially for a skill 2, because this isn't something that you're, like, you're popping off every single turn in comparison to skill 1, so or basic attack at least. Um, ultimate applies weapon enhancement level 3, and then he attacks the enemy target if they have an active burn debuff. I like it. A 90% chance to apply 50% stamina, stamina reduction to enemy target. I like it. Very, very high. And then applies a 15% additional stamina reduction to enemy if they have every burn uh, debuff. I like it. Ultimate, very, very solid. Very, It works all together. I like it. And it's a very high percent percentage to get that um, stamina reduction. So, very, very cool. Combined attack applies burn to enemy target for the insurance if they do not have the burn. Um, I like it. This is guaranteed, by the way, just FYI. So, if you pull out the combined attack, you're guaranteed to get the burn off for three turns. Very, very OP, in my opinion. And then applies weapon enhancement level one, and then he attacks the enemy target if they have an active burn debuff. So, perfect. Uh, combined attack. Proc this off, do a weapon enhancement level 1, and then you could do like a skill 2. Perfect. You could do a solid amount of damage. Alright, next up. Oh, Fugalion, I'm gonna put you... I'm gonna put you at A. I'm gonna put you at A. I don't think you're S tier yet. Um, Moving on, moving on. Jack the Ripper. Alright, sorry about that. I have no idea what the heck happened. Alright, moving on to Jack the Ripper. Now, when it comes to his passive, he applies 3% crit percentage increase every single turn. Up to 10 times, so pretty much you can get up to 30% crit rate increase, which is pretty nice. And then when it comes to skill 1, applies maximum HP reduction equals to 30% of the damage done to enemy target. Mm, not the greatest, if I remember. I don't remember how good the skill is. I used him a few times, but actually, I actually don't remember how good he is. I'll have to check back, but for now, I don't think that's crazy as how I think it is. Um, skill 2, applies bleed to enemy target for 2 turns after every attack. This is guaranteed by the way, so that is very, very good. Um, and then special applies 
20% crit damage increase and then attacks the enemy target for every active bleed debuff they have. This is super good. Super, super, super duper good. I mean, like, his kit works very, very well. It's all kind of, like, kind of, like, jumbled together except for the first skill. But, you know, he has a crit rate increase from his passive. He has the bleed from his second skill, which is guaranteed to proc off, by the way. And then he applies a 20% crit damage increase, which is guaranteed to happen for every bleed debuff your enemy has. So, he can do some crazy, crazy numbers, dude. Um, and then when a combined attack applies DP level 1 to enemy target and then attacks... Applies two bleed debuffs for every two or for two turns if the enemy target has no bleed. I like it, dude. It's all jumbled up together regarding the bleed, the crit, crit rate, crit damage. So very, very good. I'm gonna go ahead and place him at S tier because he is just too good in my opinion. Um, he was using some crazy numbers too when it came to the raid boss. I think so. Very, very nice. Moving on, we have uh, we have Mars. Mars was so so good i'm gonna go ahead and place him at s tier just because like like i know how how broken he is all right when it comes to the passive 50 percent chance to apply five percent defense increase to self for two turns upon being attacked by an enemy target so every single time you were attacked by a target there was a 50 50 chance to apply a five percent defense increase for yourself for two turns now the passive wasn't anything too crazy in my opinion but he is a tank so he is working around being defensive protecting other units and just taking all the hits when it comes to the first skill 65 percent chance to stun an enemy target for one turn this was so broken in pvp especially if you built him right was the, like the stun gear he was doing like he, he was such a troll unit dude um for being a skill one this is pretty pretty high i like it i like it i like it i feel like that's a good percentage for a skill one um if they made it any higher he just would have been insanely broken uh, automatically uh, Mineral Assault skill 2 has a 60% chance to remove all buffs from any target. Taunts all enemy targets for one turn upon removing any buffs. Super duper good dude. You know, he's a great unit because he tanks from his passive. He has a 60% chance to remove all buffs. So if you have, as the enemy has like attack buffs, you have a fairly decent chance to remove all of them. And then after that, they all, they're all forced to attack Mars, which is going to have a defense buff from his passive if it gets procced off, right? Um... Next up, ultimate applies the debuffs to enemy target, increasing the duration of all debuffs by two turns. Gains a barrier equal to 30% of damage done for two turns. Super duper good, I like it. Combined attack, 50% chance to taunt enemy target for one turn. Stunts an enemy target if they cannot be taunted. So, yeah, if you miss the taunt, you're guaranteed to stun. Like, like how good is that? And the fact that if you do fuck off the ultimate then you're you're keeping the enemy stunned for an extra however many turns like that it, it, tell me that's not broken dude he was so so dumb in, in the beta but i i pray that they don't change his kit because he was he was too good uh mimosa 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 s tier dude she was the best healer in the game i think uh passive applies recovery to all friendly targets restoring hp equal to 30 percent of magic attack upon using skill number two I think this is the same exact passive as the SR one, if I remember. Um, and when it comes to first skill, I'll pass recovery to friendly target with the lowest HP, restoring 15% of their max HP. Applies recovery to all friendly targets below 30% HP, restoring 7.5 of their max HP. So very, very nice. You get that healing off the first skill, so this is something you can kind of spam every single turn. Uh, skill two applies poison attack reduction level two and crit percentage reduction to an enemy target for two turns. This is guaranteed, by the way. It's not percentage based, it's guaranteed. Um, so this is very, very nice. Super duper good for a support type and healer. Kind of crazy. And then ultimate applies recovery to a friendly target, restoring 20% of their maximum HP. Restores an additional 25% if the target HP is lower than 40%. Very, very nice. Removes all debuffs from a friendly target and then applies a debuff to a friendly target for two turns. Wait, this is weird. What? Applies a debuff to a friendly target. I think this is kind of misworded. I think if that's, I think this is worded wrong, pretty much. Um, this part is weird. I don't know if this is correct or not, but I think everything else is. Um, but yeah, ultimate is very very solid. And then combined attack, twenty percent chance to apply thirty percent life steal to friendly target. Applies attack increase of one uh, to ally for two turns, and then applies magic attack increase to friendly target for two turns super duper nice i love it dude s tier insane 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 uh next up 
Who do we have next? We have Nozel. Okay. Nozel, not the greatest dude. He he is not the greatest SSR on the list. Uh, when I say he is as bad as Charlotte, potentially, but um, let, let's see if he really is all that bad. Passive applies barriers to self um, if your HP is below 30% of max HP. Okay. Skill 1, poison an enemy for 2 turns if you are protected. So I'm assuming if you do have a barrier. Skill 2, applies protect to self for 2 turns. Okay, there you go. Um, applies defense reduction level 2, send target for 2 turns. Okay. Special, removes all enemy targets barrier if you are protected. Reduce the cooldown of silver spears, which I think is skill 2. By 1 turn for every enemy target defeated. So it's not just reduce the cooldown, you have to defeat an enemy. Um... And then the combined attack applies incapacitate level 1 to enemy target for 2 turns. If they have it active, defense reduction debuff, and then 80% chance to apply a buff or debuff that prevents any buff from being applied. Okay. Um, I don't like the ultimate because you do have to defeat an enemy target. And he's not the type of unit that hits crazy, crazy hard either. So you're really banking on the enemies to have low HP and then procking this off. Um. I like the whole protect thing. He is like kind of like playing a, uh, a tank or not really not really at all actually but he's kind of just there to protect your unit so I would say the SR Noel is even better than um, Nozel so I'm gonna put him at C tier just because I feel like he's on the same wave as Charlotte as like not being all that great and stuff but I mean if you do get him he isn't as bad as Charlotte, I think. I mean, if anything, I'll just move on to B tier. Um, just because you do have to protect, so you can kind of, you know, tank some some damage, if that makes sense. And then you can do, um, apply some debuff. So he's a pretty, pretty good, or very, very mid, actually, support type unit, um, based off his kit here. I'm really hoping they give him a buff, because he, he did need it. Real. Now... <laughs> This is the one unit that everyone's probably going to want to reroll for if it's still off the beta. But Rill has been confirmed. His kit has changed. He is not as broken as before. I don't know what he's doing now. But I know that he is not doing all this. Because he, he was he was a god, dude. He was honestly one of the best units in the game. Uh, passive applies paralyzed to all enemy targets for 2 turns upon using skill number 2. I mean, this passive right here is already broken. It's not even percentage based. You just guarantee to get the paralyzed. For all enemies upon using skill number two like that's insane um skill one 50 percent chance to apply burn received healing reduction at level one or freeze so like for skill one that is so stupid so stupid like it was insanely broken you can just spam that every turn by the way uh skill two ghost and counter attack this counter attack was very 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 strong it was capable of just like one tapping units if they attacked uh special skill Removes all buffs on any target. 60% chance to apply defense reduction level 3 to enemy target for 2 turns. And then 30% chance to apply incapacitate for one enemy for one turn. This was crazy good because what you would do essentially is you either, if I remember correctly, you would proc off the ultimate and then after that, proc off the counter attack. If they attack real, it's a GG. Um, and then you do the combined attack, applies crit percent increase level 1. And then it attacks the enemy if they have active debuff. 80% chance to apply debuff to enemy for one turn. Uh, to enemy target for one turn, preventing from any buffs from being applied. I love it. Um, based off this list, he is S tier, but I know for a fact his kit changed. So he could go down to A or B. But um, who knows? Maybe he's still S tier. I don't know. When it comes to... Sally. Sally was actually a pretty good support type unit. And I actually used her a lot. Um, passive is applies 5% damage increase to all friendly targets for 2 turns upon using skill number 2. Very, very nice. Skill 1, 25% chance to uh, poison any target for 2 turns after every attack. So I believe it's the same skill as Charlotte. Skill 2, removes all friendly target debuffs after transferring your debuffs to an enemy target. This was so good. This was so, so good. Um, yeah, and then ultimate removes all buffs from enemy target, applies a debuff to enemy target, increasing the duration of debuffs by two turns. Combined attack, 20% chance to apply crit percentage increase level one. And then applies attack increase and magic attack increase. Crazy, crazy good. Very, very solid support type unit. I'm gonna go ahead and put her at A tier. Um, next up, we have. Who we have up next? 
William. Um, so William, I believe his kit has changed as well. He has a new ultimate. Um, so I'd be surprised if he's still doing the same thing because I think from what it looks like, he is more offensive. Uh, this William wasn't as offensive as the one we had in the beta. So passive applies 10% healing, receives healing increase to all friendly targets. Very, very nice. 40% chance to apply defense increase level 1 to all friendly targets. So very, very good. Um, yeah, 40% is not bad for skill 1. Skill 2 trans transforms the enemy target to a tree, so pretty much just a free stun. Uh, applies stamina exhaustion to enemy target and then gains 50% stamina increase. Very, very nice. Ultimate recovers applies recovery equal to 25% of magic attack to friendly target. 50% chance to apply immortality to friendly target for one turn and then applies debuff block to friendly target for one turn. Super, super good. You can like pretty much have a free turn for one of your units if they're about to die. Crazy good. Uh, combined attack, 20% chance to remove a max of 2 debuffs from your friendly target, applies to magic attack, increase to level 1. Very, very solid. I'm going to go ahead and put him at A tier. Very, very nice. I like it a lot, actually. Uh, who do we have up next? We should be coming up on... Yami, 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 Yami. Yami, unfortunately, was not the greatest. Um, we were all expecting him to be like some kind of DPS unit, but he wasn't, um, if I remember correctly. So... Passive applies 10% final damage increase to self for one turn upon winning a crit. Skill 1, a 50% chance to apply defense reduction level 1. Uh, skill 2 applies crit damage increase level 2 and then attacks the enemy target upon landing a crit. So, he doesn't have any crit rate up yet from what I'm seeing. Special applies 10% skill damage increase upon landing a crit. All friendly targets gain a 50% stamina increase buff upon defeating enemy target, okay. Uh, and then applies weapon enhancement level 1, and then attacks the enemy target if they had active defense reduction bu debuff. And then all enemies gain one special point, so one ult point um, upon defeating an enemy target. Not the greatest, only because he doesn't have any crit rate up in his kit, um, so you would have to take a support type unit. But he is capable of doing damage, it's just that you have to have a unit that can buff up crit rate. That is it, that is all. Um, if he had the passive, the same passive as Jack, he would be pretty, pretty good. He would be pretty, pretty good. That passive would work extremely well with his kit. But, um, unfortunately he does not. So I'm gonna go ahead and put him at, I'm gonna put him at B tier. Do I put him at B tier? Yeah, I, I'm gonna put him at B tier only because he doesn't have any capabilities of being able to increase his own crit rate. He would have to rely on other units, which is something I don't like. Like I said, if he had the same passive as Jack, I would put him at A tier easily. But since he doesn't, and his crit rate is like 9%, you're going to be missing like over half his kit because he doesn't hit that crit. That's why. So, um, yeah, unfortunate. And then I believe the last one is my favorite unit out of the SSRs. Um, you know, you know, you know, you know. Seasonal, you know, S tier. If I had to place him in order, he would be number one. Um, this, you know, I made a whole video about him. He is the best AOE DPS unit to have on your account, guaranteed. He was doing insane damage. Like, I don't, I don't remember how how much I was doing, but I have a whole video that I did for him. He was doing stupid numbers. Passive, same thing as Asa, except for his magic attack instead of physical attack. Um, skill one, transfer one debuff to enemy target. So very, very nice. So if you do have a debuff on Yuno, simply transfer it over to enemy target. Nice. Chillin'. Guaranteed. Skill 2. 50% chance to apply incapacitate level 2 to enemy. Like for 2 turns. Ultimate. Applies weapon enhancement level 3. And then attacks the enemy target if they have an active debuff. Applies defense penetration at level 3. And then attacks the enemy if they have an active buff. So the thing was this is that I believe... Um, who was it? Who was it? Was it real? I think Rill and Yuno were a great combo just because Rill's ultimate allowed you to do some crazy stuff. But the reason why you could do such good, great damage is because you have weapon enhancement level 3 and then defense penetration level 3. If they have the buff and a debuff, you're doing stupid damage. And then the combined attack reduces the cooldown of Swift White Bow by one turn upon defeating enemy target, applies weapon enhancement level 1. Uh, if they have the incapacitate debuff, which they will because of the skill 2, which has a 50-50 chance of being hit. Very, very nice. So, yeah, I, I really like this unit a lot. He was doing crazy, crazy damage. Um, and honestly, he was just a blast to use. So, 
There it is. There is the SSR tier list. Now, if you guys disagree with me, let me know. If you guys have your own tier list, comment down below as well. But I feel pretty confident in this tier list that I use. Honestly, the only one that would probably move down would be Jack. But, um... Do I want to move Jack down to A? I'm going to move Jack down to A just because I feel like he's not on par with the rest of these broken units. But everyone else, I feel pretty confident about where I placed him. Unfortunate for Charlotte. Hope she gets a buff. For real, please keep him the same. I loved him. He was such a fun unit to use. And uh, yeah, but I'm going to end it there. Y'all take care. Have a good one. And uh, I shall see you later. All right, take care. And the wild.